Well, good morning, everyone. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rajiv Jangiani, and it's a pleasure to be with you all. Uh, I'm coming to you this morning, as most of you are, from my home. Uh, my home's in uh, British Columbia, Canada, located on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Squamish First Nation. Um, I feel very fortunate, uh, I think I want to say, to work at uh, Kwantlen Polytechnic University, which leads Canada in its embrace of open educational practices. Uh, this includes supporting the creation, adaptation, and adoption of open textbooks and other open educational resources, uh, training and support for a wide range of open pedagogies, um, and fellowships and support for open education research. Uh, our flagship Zero Textbook Cost Initiative offers students now almost 850 unique courses and seven complete credentials with zero textbook costs. Uh, in three years, this initiative has saved our students uh, in excess of $5.2 million, and, with a, uh, and we really believe it's helped to make post-secondary education uh, in our communities uh, more affordable to many. So as you can see in this talk, uh, I'm going to share my top 10 strategies. There are many more that you could add to this, uh, but these are for building institutional support for open educational practices. And these strategies, I should say, are gleaned from my experience at KPU, uh, where I serve as the Associate Vice Provost for Open Education, uh, but also from my experience working with institutions uh, across the world. So diving right in. My first strategy is to use a multifaceted uh, approach to open education advocacy. Uh, and I think while this must always be contextualized uh, based on the nature uh, and identity of your institution and the particular barriers to equitable access that are most prominent in your context, uh, these might include, for example, highlighting the problem of uh, textbook affordability, highlighting the significant cost savings that might stem from the adoption of open educational resources, uh, showcasing innovative open pedagogies that seize on the affordances of open licensing, as well as uh, uh, measuring the impact, uh, the institutional impact of widening access on outcomes such as enrollment and persistence and performance and completion. Uh, in short, highlight the social justice implications, excite by pointing to innovative approaches to teaching and learning, and provide evidence of the many ways in which uh, this work has an impact uh, in ways that also align with the institution's strategic goals. So that's the first strategy. Second, I would say extend your advocacy to ensure that roles are either created or redefined so that supporting open education is part of people's job description. Too often I find that open education initiatives die or at least cannot flourish because they've been left to advance on the backs of the generosity and passion of those who care enough about this work, as so many of us do, but to work on it off the side of their desks. And if you consider that supporting open education really does support the institution's broader goals, uh, and if you understand that a budget for the institution is really a statement of the institution's values, it is essential that the institution puts its money where its mouth is. So at KPU, for example, I'm grateful that in addition to my administrative uh, role, open education is supported by many of my colleagues uh, whom you see on this slide. Uh, we as a team are able to do so much because we have the time and the capacity to do so. This isn't uh, some secret recipe. Third, uh, I would say surround these key people with a cross-functional working group that includes representation from faculty, the student association, teaching and learning, the library administration, and even other key stakeholders such as the bookstore. Lean on this working group uh, to provide guidance and feedback as you design and execute your open education strategy. Um, at KPU, we've published the mandate terms of reference for our open education working group on our website, and I welcome you to, to draw on our work. Fourth, work through your open education working group to reach out and collaborate with even other partners across the institution. Uh, this might include the Office of the Registrar, for example, to work together to integrate a zero textbook cost or OER search filter in the course timetable for students, uh, work with the bookstore to offer a print on demand service for open textbooks, for example. And then of course, in addition to the internal partners, actively seek, I would suggest, external collaborators, whether for collaborative OER creation projects, uh, setting up an external peer review program, or even uh, collaborating as, we, as I'm showcasing over here on an inter-institutional open pedagogy project. Uh, over here, we've, I'm highlighting that we've done this with Montgomery College, uh, which has uh, been doing wonderful work and they've been recognized this year by OE Global with an award for their open pedagogy fellowship that focuses on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Fifth, 
make a deliberate choice, I would suggest, to invest your limited resources in building local capacity instead of outsourcing to vendors who may provide some short-term convenience, but who will hold your budgets hostage in the long term. Supporting the discoverability of OER with your liaison librarians, for example, uh, and supporting the creation and adaptation of new resources by developing expertise and even the publishing program are two examples. But at KPU, we've gone a bit further. So for example, we have a teaching fellow in open education. This enables a faculty member, in this case, Arlie Crothers this year, to develop their expertise and become a powerful advocate and source of support for their peers as well. So we really focus on building your local capacity. Sixth, again, make a deliberate choice, I would suggest, to invest in community-driven and open source infrastructure. This is important for many reasons, uh, in including ensuring that the Cost of proprietary software is not a barrier to the downstream revision and remixing of the resources that you produce. Uh, at KPU, uh, our publishing suite, for example, supports open educational technologies such as WordPress, open journal systems, interactive H5P technology, and of course, Pressbooks, which is our core uh, platform for creating and publishing the open textbooks in our catalog. Uh, here are just some of the titles that we've published over the last year and a half. Seventh. Uh, regularly conduct research to evaluate the impact of your open education initiatives on all of its dimensions, including the impact on, for example, student cost savings, the impact on student success metrics, uh, the impact on net tuition revenue, and more. Uh, and I really cannot overstate the importance of having local data to support the broader arguments for adopting open educational practices, um, especially for your first well-chosen pilot projects. In my judgment, one local study is worth 10 peer-reviewed studies in the published literature. Uh, and at KPU, you can see we've done both. We publish our uh, work in peer-reviewed journals, but we also analyze the impact of our initiatives on a semesterly basis. Eighth, try to weave support for open educational practices through your institution's policies, procedures, and practices. And in doing so, try to ensure that the incentive structures are aligned where they can be, and that open education initiatives themselves are transition-proof, and they're not tied to any individuals. Right. Good examples of this strategy at KPU uh, are, for example, the language and in our intellectual property po policy, which actively encourages, as you can see here, the creation and adaptation of open educational resources, as well as publishing in open access outlets and the adoption of open science practices, all with a view to maximizing access and impact. Uh, a smaller policy, so little p policy, uh, but one that's still incredibly important for us is the integration of a new step in the course development process or the course review process. And this step involves a search uh, for relevant open educational resources that is necessary, uh, even though this policy does not mandate their adoption. It's simply a nudge to discover what exists and to make an educated choice on the part of, uh, of faculty. Ninth, uh, is to integrate support for open education into your institution's broader uh, strategic planning. In most cases, institutional vision statements, academic plans, and other documents already have language that speak indirectly to open education uh, when they refer to the importance of access, student success, and pedagogical innovation, for example. But push to take this further. At KPU, we have nine broad goals in our academic plan, and one of them centers on uh, advancing work in open education, as you can see. And this goal in turn has a strategic plan to support it, including strategic and operational goals that are being tracked over time. Uh, again, all of this is necessary, I would suggest, if you would like your open education initiative to move from a passion project to becoming an integrated and sustainable institutional strategy. And finally, draw on all of the strategies I've mentioned to provide institutional supports and structures while maintaining the engagement of and, en and ownership of uh, educators uh, within your institution. Um, in other words, work hard to unlock and provide top-down support, but ensure that the work is driven by the faculty and relentlessly aimed at supporting students. Right? The last thing I, I think we want to have is, is a, a fully top-down, uh, the last thing we want to have is a fully top-down open education initiative that however well-meaning mandates the adoption of OER, let's say. On the other hand, while it's phenomenal to have strong uh, uh, faculty interest in open education, without proper institutional supports, uh, this work can only go so far. So in my view, it's really the combination of both elements uh, uh, that can allow you to build and sustain a successful institutional open education initiative. So again, uh, these are just 10 strategies from my experience and judgment. You can no doubt add more to the list, but I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajiv. 
for those um, wonderful strategies. I think they're very helpful for many of us who are here. We have some questions.